Let's get an overview of GCP pricing. It is very important to spend some time and understand the pricing of GCP for the virtual machine. GCP provides something called as pricing calculator to estimate the cost. Here is the configuration for our virtual machine, 16 GB RAM, 4 core CPU and 60 GB storage. We have to enter this information and understand how much it will cost for our usage. Let's assume that we will be using 4 hours per day, 7 days a week, every month and let's see how much it will cost. For that you can go to Google and then search for GCP pricing calculator. You can click on this link. It will actually give us an interface where we can enter the information we are looking for. So in this case, we want to use one instance. This is primarily for learning. We'll be using free operating system and hence uh, we will leave it like this. We'll be using Ubuntu. Machine class is regular, machine family general purpose series C2. When it comes to machine type, this is where we have to make sure that we choose the right one. As per our requirement, we will be using the machine with 4 vCPUs and 16 GB RAM and hence I have to choose this one. E2 standard 4 is the machine type. Let's choose the data center Los Angeles. We will be using static IP so that we have an IP associated with our virtual machine all the time. Uh, we don't need to change it to, to connect to it using SSH. Committed usage none. We'll be spending 4 hours per day, 7 days a week. Now we can click on add to estimate. This will take care of giving us the estimate with respect to CPU and memory. It doesn't include the storage. You can scroll down and you should be able to see the estimate so far. It costs us $27 per month. If we get $300 credit, we should be able to spend almost 10 months. Still we will have $35 or $40 remaining. Now we have to include the cost with respect to the storage. The amount of storage which I want to use is nothing but 60 GB. This is where we can actually pick. Let's choose the same data center Los Angeles here. And then there are uh, zonal standard PD. I'm not sure what this PD is. PD stands for persistent disk. We can actually choose regional. We don't need zonal. Zonal might be a bit expensive. You can actually see the details here. I think zonal is the most uh, cheaper one. We can actually understand the cost by saying 60 GB here. And then we can say add to estimate. Now you can scroll down and you can see that it has gone up by $3 per month. If you want to edit, you can click on this. Even if you want to edit with respect to CPU and memory, you can click on this. So let's click on this and let's go back here. Instead of 60 here, let's say 0 and then let's say 60. I just want to make sure we choose the cheaper one. Now I can say add to estimate. I can scroll down. This is expensive one. So zonal is the cheapest one. You can pick the zonal PD which is nothing but this one. So we just have to edit this and we can actually change this to zonal from regional. So zonal is 60 GB. Add to estimate. This is the approximate cost. We will not be transferring too much of data so we don't need to worry too much about data transfer here. We should be primarily focusing on compute and storage. Make sure you understand the relationship between these two. These two go hand in hand. Keep in mind that whether you use it or not, every month you will be charged up to $3 if you just keep that storage even though you are not using the virtual machine. So with respect to storage, it's a permanent cost as long as you have the resources uh, provisioned. Whereas with respect to the compute engine or virtual machine, it is pay as you go. As long as it is in stopped state, you will not be charged. Your credits will not be saturated. So. Once again, I'm reiterating, for storage, we'll have fixed cost as long as it is provisioned. For virtual machine, CPU and memory, we'll be paying only for the time for which the virtual machine is up and running. So in this case, we have estimated the cost for four hours per day. If you want to bump up, you have to adjust those many hours as part of the calculator and you should be able to get the details. If you want to reduce a bit, you can reduce as well. Here are some of the best practices to get most out of the credit or to reduce the cost of using GCP. They are nothing but ensure that you stop the virtual machine when you are not using. You should always do that. If you do not, if you forget, then your credits will be saturated pretty fast. So in this case, if you think about it, for 4 hours per day, we are charged $26 per month. 
If it is eight hours, it will be fifty-two dollars. If it is twenty-four hours, it will be twenty-six times six, which will be approximately one fifty dollars. So within two months, uh, the credits will be saturated. If you forget to stop and if you just leave it for one month, one fifty dollars is gone. So make sure you stop the virtual machine when you are not using it. Also, we'll be using static IP address, which incurs a nominal fixed cost. We'll be using it to connect to the Jupyter-based environment to practice Python and all. There are several other advantages, so make sure to include static IP address with that nominal fixed cost. Also, make sure to open only those ports that are relevant to you. That will facilitate you to avoid any attacks. You have to spend good amount of time to understand the concepts related to firewalls, understand how to configure those firewalls so that the traffic uh, cannot just come into your box without your permissions. When I say box, it is nothing but virtual machine. You really need to ensure that only those ports that are relevant are opened. All others should be blocked. Then the attacks will be reduced and you should be able to leverage the credits and also cut down the costs of maintaining the infrastructure in cloud understanding this is very very important irrespective of the cloud platform you want to use that being said as we understood the gcp pricing now it is time for us to provision virtual machine with ubuntu on it